Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm so glad you stopped by. Click the like and subscribe and the little bell if you want to be notified of future videos. Is it possible for a diamond to have a curse on it? Well, let's ask a few people who might have been influenced by this allegedly cursed diamond. By the way, it got its name, the Hope Diamond, when it was acquired by Henry Thomas Hope. It was a 112 and 3 16 carat blue diamond. And here starts our journey. When Prince Ivan Kenneth, I'm going to mutilate some of these names, just you'll have to get used to it, <laughs> Kanatovsky acquired the diamond. He was an early owner and it appears that this would be his son uh, Jacques with the same name last name killed in a was killed in a revolt by the Russian revolutionist in the mid 1600s and then you have Jean Baptiste Tabernier now he was the first European owner who acquired this diamond in India in 1666 guess what his fate was Yup, mauled by dogs. Can you believe that? Mauled by dogs. Next, we have King Louis XIV. He died of gangrene. And all of his legitimate children died in childhood. If that isn't strange. Nicholas Fouquet, or Fouquet. He was King Louis XIV's servant. He wore this, and he was imprisoned for the rest of his life. King Louis XVI, now he was a famous ruler in France. He was sentenced to death and executed. Marie Antoinette wore it, and she was executed by her own people. Princess Marie de Lamba often wore it and was viciously killed by a mob, hit with a hammer, decapitated, dismembered, and her head was mounted on a spike. Now, there was also William Falls, a jeweler. He lived, um, but his son, who stole the diamond, later committed suicide. We have Simon Mosharid, a Greek merchant, who drove his car off a cliff with his wife and child inside. We have Sultan Abdul Hamid II in the 1900s, whose entire life was plagued with misfortune. We have Edward Beale McLean, the Washington Post, acquired it in 1911. It actually came with a fatality clause attached to it, if you can believe that. <laughs> That's how famous it had become by then. Meet Evelyn Walsh McLean. She was the last owner, um, and she quickly... Uh, realized, although she was in denial of a curse. She didn't believe in curses. However, the family newspaper business went bankrupt. Her daughter died, and later her grandson died. So the Hope Diamond found its way to the museum. A museum. Uh, and this is, it won't, it, you know, it won't be in private hands anymore. And so I'm finding out the name of the museum where it is. The National Museum of Natural History um, is where this diamond is displayed right now. So it's by the Harry Winston Gallery, um, and which was named for a New York jeweler who gifted the diamond. Interesting, he gifted the diamond to the museum and it was insured for $1 million. So what we're going to do now is ask the cards, is, did this diamond have a curse? Did this Hope Diamond have a curse? Because some of the people owned it and it passed through a lot of hands and we either we never heard of their misfortune or they didn't have any misfortune. So we're going to ask the first question, um, and I'm going to use several decks in order to determine this. This is uh, Haunted House Tarot. Oh, with 
a couple other cards in here from another deck <laughs> periodically. When you pull with a lot of decks, that can happen. So we'll just pull those out and uh, pretend that they weren't in there. Okay, so da, did the at some point did the Hope Diamond have a curse put on it? Here we go. We've got the Four of Cups. Oh my. Oh, this is interesting card. There's actually a skeleton hand coming out behind the chair with a woman and some wine glasses in front of her. So that's interesting that a skeleton hand is coming from behind the chair. Uh, so let's go ahead and pull one more card out of this deck and then I'll grab another deck. Wow, we have two women here. This is the Seven of Pentacles. She looks worried. All right, so that in itself, the Pentacles could um, indicate a curse, but we're going to ask a normal deck uh, just so we have a better perspective. So this is the Robin Wood deck. Did the Hope Diamond have a curse put on it? Wow, there's a lot of confusion around it. Um, there is a lot of confusion around that because it caused a lot of misfortune. So here's a man who is a king, all right? So what did the king do? So maybe it's going to tell us a story. There once was a confused king. <laughs> Probably had to be Louis, right? One of the Louis. That's interesting. That's the chariot. Um, this is around their necks. So it almost feels like, I mean, this actually kind of looks like, well, I don't have a picture of it. Uh, let's see, Mary, the last one, Evelyn had it around her neck. So a lot of women, the women wore it around their neck. Um, and I'm focused on the dark energies and the positive energies. I'm feeling that it had some dark energies in it. You know, items can pick up dark energy. Uh, there, it, It's very possible that it picked up dark energy. Uh, this is the hermit card. This is like shining a light on the situation. Like this is... I almost want to say that the diamond was, it. Re, I hate to say this, but this is coming to me like this, so I've got to spit it out. The diamond reflect who owned it. So if the person who owned it was of high integrity and high vibration, it's almost like it, it they were fine. But if they had any darkness to them at all, that's when it would hit them. It would magnify the darkness. That's what I'm feeling from this, you guys. What are you feeling? Oh, the cards are saying yes. It has to do with where the vibration of their heart was. So if they were, if they were good-hearted people, if they had a high level of love, um, it didn't mirror the dark side. Passed off to a lot of people. It was passed off. You know, it was handed off to a lot of people. So this is like quick. Sometimes it quickly changed hands um, because it had quite a reputation once it became the Hope Diamond and, you know, people were aware of it and it traveled around the world. So it's telling, it's almost like the diamond is telling me its story right now. <laughs> like the diamond's like, I've, I've been all over the world. I'm like, woo, that's kind of cool. Hope Diamond. Um, I'm going to grab from another deck. What was the original purpose of the diamond when it was carved. What was the, what did I do? Mix all these other different decks in here? What are these? Ew. Wonder how long these cards have been missing. I wonder if these are supposed to tell the story. It was maybe originally for a woman it was carved for a woman um 
and I feel like something happened to her. It doesn't feel good. And then it, it got passed on to someone else. I think the it really appealed to women. Um, but let's pull those cards out and get those matched in. This seems weird because, you guys, what are the chances of me pulling out these decks and having all these other cards in them when I'm doing the Hope Diamond reading? That just seems a little bizarre. So I'm going to ask now the deck that... Um, <laughs> I'm going to... I'm going to ask this, which is tarot. What was the original intent of this diamond when it was carved? The original intent. So we have the three of wands. So it was in another country and it was a merchant. Like it was, it was for a merchant. It was a diamond that was for a merchant, not really. So a merchant might have carved it as a special request for someone is what I'm feeling. Someone wanted, you know, someone wanted, and there's blue water, blue sky. Somebody wanted this diamond to be blue oh dear and then they died or there was and there's another card here too the seven of cups and it's like wait a minute wait a minute you don't skip ahead in the story i feel like he's pointing his finger at me saying get this right or shut up <laughs> Uh, so then there was a lot of death going on back then. So I feel like this is like, don't be confused because there was a lot of death during that time. So don't jump to conclusions. Fine. Let's say we won't jump to con conclusions. But Mr. Finger telling me to get this right. So is that diamond cursed or not? If you're going to just try to correct me in the card, then tell me if this diamond has a curse. If this curse is still active and if it had a curse. You got to be kidding me. I have to look at it. There's a blue fish in that cup, by the way. There's a blue fish in that cup. The page of cups, and she's handling it, and it has a blue fish. She's in the water. So this, again, goes to whoever is handling it. So does this diamond reflect off the energy of the person, is it like a karma diamond? In other words, if you get this diamond and you're really an evil person, this diamond literally is going to get you killed? Is that, is that how I'm reading this? I mean, is this really what is going on? Because that's what it appears to like. Yeah. It's got some energy working through it. You can't be any more clear than this. She's got a blue dress. They're touching, it's light. They're touching this cup and there's light streaming out. It's, I mean, you can't get any clear. The man's touching it, the woman's touching it. Doesn't matter who is touching it. It just depends on what their energy state is. So it evidently attacks the energy state of the person's vibration of who is touching it. Both those cards, they're touching a cup, by the way. So can this ever be broken? I mean, is this, is this some kind of thing that can be stopped? Can it be stopped so that doesn't happen anymore? Or maybe it's run its course? A king put it in place. So a king wearing, I'm not kidding you again, a king wearing a blue dress, well, robe, whatever you want to call that. I don't want to offend any kings. Uh, whatever they wore for their outfits, but it was blue and he's holding the cup. We've definitely got cups being significant. This guy's like, wait a minute. We've got cups. Everybody's holding cups. This diamond is a container and it holds energy. It's holding something. It's holding something in it. What's it holding? What's it hold? All right. The diamond is a container. I get that. What's it holding? What is it holding? I'm sitting at the edge of my seat right now because I can't stand it. Justice. That's karma. Wow. It's like a karma diamond. Except you get immediate karma. <laughs> I mean, if you don't have good karma, boom, you're taken out. That is very interesting. I, I am really, uh, I guess I didn't, quite expect this okay so 
so now the diamond is in a museum. So what's going on with the diamond now that it's in a museum? What's going on with it now? I feel like it's right here, right here. What's going on with it now? Whoa, it's still ready. It's still ready. It's prepared. It's prepared to act if somebody touches it. Don't touch the diamond. No wonder it's in a museum. It's triggered by the touch. So um, is there a way to program the diamond not to do that? Is it can, can the diamond be programmed to get rid of that? Every time I ask this question, the cards repeat. First we get the king, and now we get the knight. And the knight is holding it. It's almost like we'd have to call upon a knight which would probably be from the spirit, a knight from the spirit who's familiar with the diamond or that king back there who's familiar. It's almost like we have to call on somebody who was back in the beginning, maybe even the person who carved it, maybe even the person who carved it put this in there and ask them to remove it. It's almost like we'd have to do that. Yeah, in the spirit world. Okay, I gotcha. They wanted to confirm that I was doing it right. It, this knight is not... A physical earth person it's somebody in the spirit who's connected directly connected to the diamond and is aware of what that diamond does okay well holy smack this was interesting so now you're all like melanie 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 call on that person call on that person all right why not this is your channel and we'll do what you want um this is my Steampunk for talking to deceased people. I would like to call on the knight or the king who was fully aware that this diamond has a consequence for people based on who touches it and their energy. I'd like to call on that person. Are they willing to come forward and talk about this? Are you willing to come forward and are you willing to talk about it? Okay, so they're off the planet. So nobody has showed up yet because that's the moon card. Uh, can somebody find them? Because there's no people in that card. Can somebody please locate them so that I can ask them about removing this? And by the way, the majority of the color in here is blue, just so you know, different deck. Now we're, the blue is really coming in. Not to be afraid. We don't need to be afraid of it because we're not touching it. Eight of Swords, the person doesn't want to deal with it. They don't want to be called upon. So they're ignoring us or they're blocking my request out. Why? Why would they block my request out from this diamond? Why would they do that? Seven of Swords. Oh, they're not of high integrity. See, I have a rule. I only talk to people in spirit world who are love of light, love and light. If they're not love and light, I won't talk to them. This person is not of love and light. So it's not they're blocking me. I'm blocking them because they're not a good person. Seven of Swords, they're not a good person. Now what do I do? Um, okay. So, um, hmm. Is there anybody in the spirit world that's capable of breaking this that isn't evil? Is there anybody in the spirit world that can break this that's not evil? No, that's not me. Oh, that's a crystal skull. I was going to say, the tarot reader, the tarot reader. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm just a tarot reader. I don't, I don't know about that. But that's a crystal skull. And I know exactly which crystal skull it is. So if you guys want me to do it, I guess you probably do. Well, then there's going to be quiet for a minute while I go and get my crystal skull. One moment. I guess you never know where these readings are going to take you. Um, so I'm going to um, put the Hope Diamond up here and have the Crystal Skull anchor into the Hope Diamond. And then I'm going to go back and ask the Crystal Skull. Um, oh, I feel like I have to touch it because I have to program it. Oh, this will be weird. Um, let's get the cards out of here so we don't bend and ruin my cards. And I'm going to program this skull... Uh, this is Czar. 
I've had him since 2010. He was he he's really spectacular. Um, so I'm gonna put my hand on it and say, um, Zar, break any negative energy or curses or anything negative concerning the Hope Diamond. I would like you to break that, dissipate it, send it to another galaxy that it can never be uh, returned or it can never harm anybody on any dimension, on any timeline. Now, whenever I do that, I'll pull a card to see if that was successful. Was that successful? Um, programming Czar to take out the negative energy of the Hope Diamond. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. Um, wow. Hand coming in from the spirit. And that is the judgment card. So hand coming in from spirit. So someone else also actually assisted with this. Thank you. Um, cause I know that they would have been from love of light. Oh my God. Five of cups, the blood spilling. So was this broke then? That's like a ritual, like a blood, like the, oh my God. And there's a pentacle on their back. It's like a ritual. God. You showed up before. I recognize you. You were in the deck. You green woman who looks not the best. And is that a rune? I think that's a rune carved on. Oh, God, now I got to figure out what rune that is. What rune is that with an X on the top and a diamond on the bottom? Oh, I have to, I, I have to find out. I've got to find out what rune that is with um, an X on the, oh, the X is on the bottom. It's upside down. There's, a, and it's prosperity, Othelia, 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 prosperity rune. It's a diamond and an X. You've got to be kidding me. So she did it for prosperity. G greed with envy, green, greed, green. Green is money. Greed. So she was after greedy p people? Is that what you were after? I don't know. Anyway, stop interfering and getting me off on another track. I just want to know if this worked. Now it's taking me off on another on another thing. Um, all right. I feel like I feel like this is the card that tells me. This is the four of pentacles. So I feel like this worked. And, and I'm going to ask, just to be safe, I'm going to go to my go-to deck, which is either Universal Weight or Robin Wood. I'm going to actually use Universal Weight. Um, is that diamond safe now? Is the Hope Diamond safe right now? Is it safe for people to handle regardless of their energy? Yeah. This is, this is a good card. This is all yellow in the card. <laughs> There's nothing evil in this card. Three of wands. Everything's yellow and yellow is happiness. So I feel really good about this. Well, this is weird. I didn't expect to take any action on the Hope Diamond during the... <laughs> Justice has been served. Justice has been served. Huh. Isn't that an interesting card to end on? Justice shall be served. You know, you just... This is what I love about um, tarot cards and different forms of divination. It, I, I love the fact that you never know where these readings are going to go. I never know what tools I'm, you know, I, I had no idea that that one tarot card had a rune picture in it. And so I had to quickly Google the rune and, you know, you can look it up. Um, and it's, it's, the, it's so amazing. It's so incredible where this uh, reading went. So I want to thank um, my community because you guys um, put out there for a suggestion for me to do the Hope Diamond. It was not on my list. It was not on my radar. And this Hope Diamond has had a very interesting life or existence or whatever story to it. It's been very fascinating for me to do this reading. So thank you for joining me and I'll see you on the next video.